Hi, I'm Rachel, the Messy Minimalist, and today we are going to declutter my handbag and my laptop bag. I like to think of this as a gender-neutral video, even though it might be leaning a little bit more towards females. But hey, any good guy out there knows that there is something very special about a good purse. Whether you have a handbag, a purse, or a laptop bag, I like to think of my purse as like an all-inclusive thing. So I don't wanna have a ton of little other purses inside of a purse. I just want my purse to work for itself. So it needs to have a couple zippers, maybe a change purse separately, but like that would be it. Other than that, I just need something that's functional. But my problem is that if I have too many pouches, or if I don't have enough pouches, it just kind of collects stuff. As a messy person in my day-to-day -day life, I feel that my purse and this, you know, thing that I take with me everywhere is really just a reflection of my own home too. So I treat it the same way that I treat everything else in my life, which is just kind of a dumping ground for stuff. This is something that I'm trying to get better at. It's been on my mind for a while. And again, I'm just finally ready to say, hey, I'm going to focus in on my purse and laptop bag. And at the bare minimum, I'm gonna declutter it and get it cleaned out. I pull a lot of inspiration from the KonMari method. She would tell you to empty it every single time that you come home. I'm just gonna be real about this. Like, I don't have time to empty my bag every time I come home. I just don't. For me, I'm lucky if I put it on the same hook every time which I am trying to do. I wish I could follow her method. I can't, I cannot empty it every time. It's just not gonna happen. But what I can do is figure out certain items that maybe do end up in my purse. I can make a commitment to take those particular items out. I also plan on committing to only having one large bag and one small bag. And I'm determined to get rid of the rest. I probably have, I don't even know, I'm guessing maybe six bags or something. I've gotta go do a little search for them. But I'm gonna go around the house, gather all of my laptop bags, backpack type situation, handbag, zipper, pouches, whatever I have, gather them up, I'm gonna pick out the one large one that I want and the one small one that I want, so I've got what I need. The rest of it I'm gonna donate, and if there's still stuff in some of them, which there probably is, then I'm going to sort that out and figure out why this keeps happening. So before I get started, one thing I wanna mention is that I feel like in order for me to commit to one bag, or at least one primary handbag, I need to love it, and so I've been questing for a long time to find a bag that I love, and I finally found one. I'm not the kind of person who buys $300 bags. I'm typically like a TJ Maxx bag buyer, but I did finally decide that if I was gonna commit to having one that I really love that's gonna last me a long time that I would need to go and you know, actually do some research and find something that I like. So I found an Angela Roy bag. I'm not sure if I just was susceptible to Instagram posts or like what it was that, that, you know, turned me on to it, but just a couple things about it that I feel like for me anyway were intriguing and maybe not for you guys, but I don't think I've ever actually talked to you guys about this, but I'm not a vegan. I'm not a super crazy health food nut. I'm not an animal rights activist, but I do feel like the more that I get into this minimalism thing, at least attempt to, to get into it, I find that there's a lot more just kind of iffy practices that I'm just not into. Just leather in general. Like I've always loved leather and leather's one of those things now where I'm like, oh, knowledge is power, I guess. And ignorance really is bliss because the less ignorant I am about certain practices, the more money I'm spending on better quality stuff. The way that this relates to handbags is I did a lot of research. I decided that if I was gonna get a handbag, I needed one that would last. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a purse that I pulled out of my closet in like my second episode. Episode, and it was just like peeling apart. The exterior of it was literally peeling away. It was gross. And that used to be one of my favorite purses. So I went out, I started searching for a really awesome bag. I found a handbag that so far I love. It's an Angela Roy bag. So I saw it on Instagram. It's uh it's my color, which is mustard. <laughs> but aside from that, they have a bunch of other colors and they've got like backpacks, and small handbags and big, you know, like duffel purses and stuff. And I chose this one because I felt like it was going to allow me to get rid of my other purses, you know, not feel like I needed something of all sizes. So it's kind of an in-between size. It could dress up with something or dress down with something. So anyway, the reason that I particularly like this brand and that I felt like this was so nice was because it is supposedly vegan leather. 
The idea is that it's a leather that's not actually made from animals. So it's a fake leather, but it's supposedly really durable. And I have been using it for a while and it seems pretty durable. I think it's just the little touches. It's like the thread is nice. The buckles are nice. I think that they're gold plated. So it's not a cheap bag by any means. It was over $100. It's the most expensive bag that I've ever owned but I'm hoping that the quality means it's gonna last me a long time here. You know, nice magnetic clasp, little extra pouch inside, and then a zipper pouch on the outside. And the thing that I particularly like about it is that it's one of those bags that, like you can open it and really get into it, as opposed to like the really stiff bags that you can barely get your hand into. It's not super soft leather, so it holds its shape, but it's not too firm, so you can actually dig around in it. And it's got an adjustable strap. So anyway, that was my big purchase. It's part of a minimalism journey. It seems kind of uh, like counterproductive to go and purchase something, but I'm not just trying to be a crazy minimalist. I'm also trying to improve the quality of my life. And I realize that I've got a bunch of purses that are falling apart. I also need to look professional when I go out. I have client meetings several times a week. I do go on dates occasionally, but that sounds bad. I go on dates with my husband. <laughs> That's really what I mean. I like to still look nice and cleaned up and not like I am um, like Raggedy Ann all the time. That's enough about that. I'll link to this one in my description. It's not just this bag. Angela Roy has like a bunch of other shapes and sizes and stuff like that. So I'm going to grab my other purses and just kind of dump them out and see what we're working with here. Yeah, let's just see what we got. Yeah, it's mostly trash, I think. But believe it or not, like, this is stuff I'm toting around with me all the time. You're just like, actually trash. A snack of my daughter's, ew. There's some old cheese in there and crackers. Um, okay, yep, we're just gonna start sorting it and see where we come to. So I just kind of categorized it. So let's just go from section to section here. I have a bunch of receipts. So yeah, those alone need to be gone through. Royalty cards. Really no ladies purse would be complete without tea. Band-aids for when you get blisters on your feet. Trash. That's all trash that I've been hauling around in my bags. A plethora of pens far too many pens, car chargers that should be left in the car, first aid kit that should be left in the car, money, lots and lots of loose money, some stones and beach glass, and a binky, a bunch of paint chips that probably don't need to be in my purse all the time, and then just, you know, bathroom goodies like tampons that we don't need, Tylenol, Advil, a poor lonely earring where I don't know where the other one is for if I smell bad and I need some quick perfume. Um, a lip sense balm moisturizer. So 
A couple people have asked me in the past about if I wear lip color and I mentioned that I only keep it in my purse. This is the lip color that I keep in my purse. So these are the lip colors that I use. Again, if you ever see me with a little bit of lip color, that's probably what it is. So a lot of junk in here. I'm actually really curious to know what you guys have in your bags, mostly just because I assume that what I have is pretty run of the mill stuff, but I don't know, you know, does anything stand out to you guys as weird? <laughs> Definitely let me know. Again, just a couple items. I know I kind of pointed to them already, but just stuff that like belongs in the car. So, you know, I've got a first aid kit, which is a great thing that I once put in my purse, but never made it to my car. Same with this stuff. Like this is doing me no good in my purse. They belong in the car. Probably don't need to keep them both, actually. Um, who has this many pens in their purse? Got a nice handful of pens. I do think it's important, at least for me, I need to keep a pen in my purse always. I'm going to take a pen and this will go in my purse. I've got two bags that I'm keeping. I'm keeping my Angela Leroy bag, obviously. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm still in my honeymoon phase with it, so clearly I love it. But I'm gonna stock this bag full and then I'm also keeping a bag that I will be using for my laptop and everything. Despite the fact that it is starting to come apart a little bit, I'm really rough on my bags, but despite the fact that this is happening, which again, if you actually buy a quality bag like this one, then you aren't gonna get weird fraying and things like that, but pen, pen. I have my lip liner, which I really don't even wear the lip liner, but I'll actually use it as a color. And then I have my NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. In case you didn't catch it earlier, this is the stuff that I use if I wanna have a little bit of color. So anybody who saw my makeup video and who asked like, hey, don't you have lip color? Yes, I do. This is my lip color. I just don't keep it as an everyday wear. This is gonna go in my purse and my lip liner. I'm gonna put both of these in my purse and the reason that I don't stock any of this stuff in my laptop bag and only in my purse is because I'm never gonna take my laptop bag somewhere that I don't take my purse. So if I need any kind of extra lip stuff, my purse is gonna be here and it'll have it in it. Lotion, kind of a big thing for me. Any brand will do. I'm not really picky about hand lotion, but I am picky about having dry hands. So this is going to stay in my purse I don't even know what this goes to. So just in case you guys didn't see this earlier, these are what maybe look like just a bunch of rocks, but in fact, they're Petoskey stones. And yes, I'm licking them because that's what I grew up learning to do. You get it wet to see the pattern and true country girl. <laughs> One little trick I have learned is that if you take like cooking oil you can rub the oil on the Petoskey stone and it gives it kind of like a permanent polished look without having to actually polish it. For anybody who doesn't live in Michigan, if you just find a pretty stone, you can also use the oil trick and it gives it the illusion of always being wet. And beach glass. So I'm sort of obsessed with beach glass. I have a collection of it and I'm gonna go add this to it, but first I'll show you what it looks like. So this is my collection of beach glass. I'm gonna add to it, but basically beach glass is just like dulled glass that has washed up on the shore at the beach. More fun to keep if it's a pretty color, but lots of greens, blues, purples, and then of course clear. Yeah. I don't collect that many things, but some of the stuff I collect is, tends to be nature related and I have not yet decided to minimize my beach glass collection, so this is gonna go back on the shelf. For the record, I haven't just been doing a whole ton of painting. I've done a little bit of painting, but not that much. Not enough to justify having so many paint swatches in my purse. I don't know which one of these I actually have. I think that this is the one that's on my wall behind my TV. These are trash now. Perfume. It's not a brand of perfume that I actually really wear. It just so happens to be a more portable size. The reason that this is being carried is actually for awful moments if I realize I smell. So you're probably thinking, well, you should just have extra deodorant. And then if you smell, then you've got it solved. But I don't feel like it's that easy. If I find out that I smell because I forgot to wear deodorant one day or whatever the reason is, typically I, at that point, am already worried about it saturating my clothes or something else. And it's not that I'm a big sweater or anything. I really don't sweat that much. And I like to think I don't smell that much either, but 
everybody smells sometimes it just happens and if for some reason I find like oh my gosh I smell then I have this as an emergency oh my gosh I smell cover up so this is going in my purse too alrighty little bit of extra cash gotta love that extra cash that is going to serve as the place that I keep my money. I actually planned on getting rid of this, but now I just realized that I don't have anything else to keep my money in and I don't want it loose in my purse. So that's where that's happening and I'm good. So basically now my purse primarily consists of where I keep my money, my pen, my lotion, and then any and all of the like beauty type stuff was in the little zipper pouch. So um, to further simplify, I have designated that this back zipper is only for receipts. Like that's the only thing that's gonna go in there. Anytime I get a receipt, that's where it's gonna go. When it gets full, I can pull it out and sort out my receipts and know that I'm not gonna have to, you know, dig through a bunch of other stuff. So that is primarily the receipt spot. Everything else in there is basically just those couple necessities that I have. So now you can see my laptop bag is literally a notebook tossed in the bottom and I've got a pen in the pouch and that is it. And my laptop, it goes in there. It also has a zipper container that the laptop fits in so that way it's not just loose in the bag, but we are good on that front. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not a subscriber and you wanna keep watching me declutter things inside and outside, around my house, in my garage, down at the beach, I've got a lot of area to cover and I am gonna keep doing videos every Thursday. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.